Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the basics of hemoglobin. Now, we've already discussed the basics of red blood cells, so if you guys haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you guys go check it out. It's located on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, where you can find a playlist for Hemonc that you guys can watch for step one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because it will really help us out. We're posting brand new videos for you guys every single day for step one. Now, the basic things you, basic things you need to know about hemoglobin is that it is a carrier protein for oxygen that's located in the blood. It's found in our red blood cells and it's composed of globin chains where you have four chains located in two pairs each and then you have four heme molecules as well. Heme is consist it consists of protoporphyrins like this uh, this chemical structure here. This is a protoporphyrin as well as iron and when iron combines with protoporphyrin you're going to get a heme molecule. Hemoglobin is going to act like a buffer for protons in our blood. And uh, this right here is a heme molecule. As you can see, you have the protoporphyrin and the iron combined. And this is a chemical or is a molecular structure of hemoglobin. Now, when we zoom in and we look carefully, you can see that you have these these uh, these globin chains, which are four chains in two pairs. And you have one, two, three, four heme molecules that are attached to these globin chains. So that is hemoglobin uh, completely. You also need to have a good understanding of hemoglobin development. Hemoglobin, uh, we've talked a little bit about this already in our red blood cell basics, but there are three main types of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, embryonic hemoglobin, you have fetal hemoglobin, and adult hemoglobin. And within the adult stage, you also have hemoglobin A1 and A2. Now, keep in mind, red blood cells are formed in these four uh, main locations for organs, right? You have the yolk sac, you have the liver, you have the spleen, and you also have bone marrow. Most production of RBCs and hemoglobin is going to occur in the bone marrow. Now, hemoglobin itself exists in two forms. You have the deoxygenated form that has a low affinity for oxygen, and it promotes the release of oxygen to the tissue, so this is going to be favored by the tissues. This is also known as the taut form. So the way I like to remember it is that uh, our muscles are taut to take oxygen okay therefore the deoxygenated form is going to release oxygen faster because the muscles want to get that oxygen tissue then you have the oxygenated form this has a high affinity for o2 because of something called uh, positive cooperativity positive cooperativity means that it's going to bind stronger to uh, oxygen ev for every heme molecule that gets that binds to oxygen you're also going to have negative allosteric uh, which is due to the 2,3 BPG molecule. And this whole oxygenated form is going to promote the uptake of oxygen from the lungs. Then, therefore, it is favored by the lungs. Now, this is also known as the relaxed form because your uh, your body is going to be more so, your, your, sorry, your hemoglobin is going to be more relaxed to take the oxygen in this form. Now, one thing to understand is that fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity for O2 than uh, adult hemoglobin. And this is because fetal hemoglobin has a decreased affinity for 2,3 BPG, and it's going to drive uh, oxygen across from the placenta. Keep in mind that a fetus needs a lot of oxygen while it's growing, right? Because it needs to develop, it needs to become into a baby. So in order to do that, you need to have a molecule that has a higher affinity for oxygen than just normal hemoglobin. The mother's hemoglobin has, you know, oxygen associated with it, but fetal hemoglobin has gonna, is going to have a very high affinity for oxygen in and of itself. Now, another molecule that's very uh, closely related to hemoglobin is called myoglobin. Now, this molecule is a protein that's only found in uh, muscle cells, but it functions very similar to hemoglobin. Now, the difference is, is that it's composed of a single polypeptide chain, unlike uh, a hemoglobin that has four chains and two pairs. It contains only one heme molecule. And you can see this in the molecular photo, the molecular structure we have. We have one beta or alpha helix sheet right here. And uh, in this sheet, you also have just one a heme group right here, heme molecule that's attached to it. 
but the one thing to understand is that myoglobin is going to have a higher affinity for oxygen than hemoglobin in and of itself. Now, when does myoglobin become important? Well, it's going to become important during crush injuries. When your muscle cells are broken, you're going to release myoglobin into your uh, bloodstream and it's going to present as hemoglobinuria, hemoglobinuria in lab testing. The reason why it's going to present as hemoglobinuria is because we're not able to differentiate when we do these lab tests if it is hemoglobin or myoglobin. It's actually going to be myoglobin that's causing the hemoglobinuria. It's not going to be hemoglobin. It's actually a false positive. But you need to understand why uh, it's happening. It's happening because of a crush injury that's releasing he uh, myoglobin. This can also happen to people who work out really, really hard one day and then the next day they start peeing uh, red you know, blood and they see blood in their urine. It's not actually blood. It's not hemoglobin that's being released. It's their myoglobin from their muscle cells that was being released. Now, as far as hemoglobin is concerned, hemoglobin can also have uh, if a form of hemoglobin that can also occur, sorry, is called methemoglobinemia. Now, this is the oxidized form of hemoglobin. This is not good, okay, so we're just going to write that down. This is not normal for hemoglobin to be in this state, in the methemoglobinemia form. This is because hemoglobin is going to contain a ferric iron instead of a ferrous iron. Now remember, recall back to our uh, previous slide where we talked about the chemical structure of heme. Heme like this, it looks something like this. I'm drawing it very roughly, right? The whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is your heme molecule. In the middle, you have a iron 2 plus that's bound to four nitrogenous groups, okay? This is the iron 2 plus that, uh, that you normally have. When you convert that iron 2 plus into iron 3 plus, you're going to have methemoglobinemia or methemoglobin in general. This form has low affinity for oxygen because it's not the normal form. And uh, tissues are going to become hypoxic because they're going to have decreased oxygen available to them. Now, one thing to understand is methemoglobin has a very high affinity for cyanide, and that's where it's important. Methemoglobin is often induced, it's often caused, in order to prevent patients from developing cyanide poisoning. Okay, so how, uh, how is that going to happen? Well, we're going to talk about that in a second, but just understand that methemoglobin in normal states is not good. It's not good. But if you have cyanide, right, poisoning, well, in this case, for the case of cyanide poisoning, you actually want to induce methemoglobinemia because that's going to allow you to bind to cyanide and inactivate it and uh, be able to get oxygen back to your tissues and prevent cyanide poisoning from occurring. Now, methemoglobinemia is going to present with cyanosis and chocolate-colored blood. That's very important. Chocolate-colored blood is a key giveaway for step one. High yield. High yield stuff, guys. High yield. Now, this, is good. this can be caused by nitrates and benzocaine. Um, now, this is one thing to understand. Not only can this be caused by nitrates and benzocaine, but you can also induce methemoglobinemia with nitrates and benzocaine in order to, to treat for uh, cyanide poisoning. And in order to treat methemoglobin, there's a very easy way to remember it. Methemoglobinemia is treated with methylene blue, meth and met, right? The way I remember it is meth is treated with meth, uh, just the prefixes, and vitamin C. So you want to treat it with methemoglobinemia and vitamin C. Uh, sorry, you want to treat methemoglobinemia with methylene blue and vitamin C. And with that being said, we are done with this lecture. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. You can follow us on our social media accounts right here. Uh, we post some pretty cool stuff on our Instagram, so I highly recommend it. And if you guys don't know, you can find our podcast, our lectures on your favorite podcast service provider for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up, baby. Thank you so much for listening and continue on to the next lecture.